Okay, I think we're good to go. Um, hello and welcome to everyone. Uh, thank you for dialing in to today's webinar on the split of the SPLA IO, um, hosted by the Small Arms Survey and its Mapping Actors and Alliances project in South Sudan. I am Christopher Carlson. I am the coordinator of the mapping project uh, that we have here, uh, as well as the HSBA uh, project on Sudan and South Sudan. Uh, thanks again for everyone who's joined us today. Um, this webinar uh, on the SPLAIO is part one of a two-part series uh, that we're going to be hosting. Next week will be part two, and we will have members of both SPLAIO factions present, uh, give them an opportunity uh, to present their positions, as well as provide some commentary on the current status of the peace agreement and so we're very much looking forward to that. We are tentatively scheduling that event the same time next Thursday, that's September 2nd. Um, and everyone who is here now and has registered for today's webinar will be receiving an announcement with those details. So please look out for that. Just a few uh, general comments before we get started. Uh, as usual, I'll be recording today's webinar. Um, this webinar, in addition to all of those previously, are posted on the YouTube Small Arms Survey channel. Um, we've got uh, webinars on Unity, John Delay, Upper Nile, as well as uh, a number of other topics. So please, if you haven't seen those webinars and you're interested, I hope that you'll go over to our YouTube channel and check those out. Um, we have a number of briefing papers that have been published on our MAPS website mwapws.org. You can access those if you haven't already by registering on the maps.org website. In addition to these publications, of course, you can also find uh, all of our publications that have been produced by the HSBA project on the HSBA website. That's smallarmsurveysudan.org. And so I hope that you also pay a visit there. Um, if you're new, to our webinar series or new to the Mapping Actors Project, you can visit the website, as I mentioned, maps.org and register. This gives you access to the 700 plus profiles of individuals, armed groups, and political parties in South Sudan. Um, if you have any problem doing so, logging in and creating a registration for yourself, please let us know and we can assist you with that. With regard to today's webinar, um, following the presentation with our panelists, there will be uh, uh, opportunity for questions and comments from participants. I ask that anyone who would like to pose a question or comment, please do so through the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen and not through the chat box. This will help us maintain some organization of those questions that are coming in and, and uh, help us try to get to all those questions uh, in good time. Um, during the course of today's event. Um, moderating today's discussion will be my colleague, Joshua Craze, a researcher with the Mapping Actors and Alliances Project and author of several HSBA publications over the years at the Small Arms Survey. Um, joining Joshua <clears throat> is my Small Arms Survey colleague, Barry Marco, um, really the engine behind the data that you will find on the maps.org website. And our special guest today, very happy to have Paul Gatkuth, former member of parliament um, and uh, a longtime contributing researcher to HSBA publications, uh, including two reports, Popular Struggles and Elite Co-optation, the New Air White Army in South Sudan Civil War, another entitled Isolation and Endurance, Riek Bashar and the SPLM IO, in a 2020 HSBA briefing paper, Conflict and Cooperation Transitions in Modern Ethiopian Sudanese Relations. Paul, very happy to have you here today. Thank you very much. Very happy much. To have you. Thank you. I'm um, very much looking forward to today's discussion. Uh, I will pass it over to Joshua to introduce today's topic. And uh, thank you again, everyone, for coming. And uh, Joshua, over to you. Thanks, Christopher. So what we're going to do today is begin, I hope, at the beginning of the split and try to think about some of the reasons for it 
um, and the particular temporality that it took. And then we're going to slowly move through what's happened in the last couple of weeks towards ending with large scale questions of what the future will be and what the, the peace agreement will look like going forwards. Please put your questions, as Christopher said, in the Q&A box. The reason that we do that is because these videos then go out on, the YouTube, on YouTube. And so when I ask questions from the Q&A box, I'm not going to use people's names, which allows people to ask questions effectively anonymously. And so that's the reason we have the system that we have at the moment. So I'm going to take those questions and I'm going to integrate them into what I'm saying. But as we're moving from the beginning, as it were, to the future, don't be, don't be concerned if your question isn't immediately um, brought up. If it's a question about, for instance, what the international community will do in the future or what the prospects for security sector reform are, we are, we are going to get to all the questions. So I want to start um, by asking both Bol and Ferry, what's the root cause, do you think, of this split? And what explains why it happened now? Because we've seen a lot of tension over the last few months, right? We've seen tension over Gatwich trying to dismiss um, Dilling from the position of head of military intelligence for the IO. And of course, Dilling being a relative of Mashar, that was not taken well. We've seen Mashar trying to effectively remove Gatwich and place him in the position of peace advisor to the government rather than the head of chief of staff. So these tensions have been evident for quite some time, but what's the root of these tensions? And why have these tensions exploded right now? And I'll begin with Bol, what do you think? Uh, thank you, Dr. Joshua. And thank you everyone, greetings. I'm currently in Juba, uh, just come back from Kigali and uh, just to uh, lucky enough that to have you also for the, uh, uh, for this web webinar. Uh, I think most of you, uh, apart from being in the webinar, but of course you've been in uh, looking into this for a very long time. There are a lot of build-up events in, uh, in issues concerning peace agreement. Uh, Simon, if you read his uh, declarations, is actually emphasized some, some, some reasons. And of course, Within those reasons, there's behind those reasons that why he's actually doing this. Uh, the security arrangement, this is one of the issues that he raised, uh, and also his experience of, uh, of with the government you know, uh, that uh, the peace agreement is not working. You know, the whole thing is about peace agreement is not working. So, so uh, uh, now. Why, why is this time? I think the, the SPLM IO military high commands, they were asking Dr. Riek to, to come uh, to their areas and discuss what delayed the peace agreement. And then uh, with a response, which was not uh, the way they wanted, then Dr. Riek also asked them to come to Juba. I was invited Simon to come to Juba which Simon also declined and Dr. Riek also declined not to go uh, to, uh, I mean, uh, to the military area to discuss issues that's concerning, you know, the, the peace agreement uh, implementation. Uh, issue of uh, de dealings and plus many others that also uh, been raised, uh, many issues before, these are administrative issues, but the whole scenarios, the whole thing is just a decline implementation of peace agreement in the security sector, which concern more Simon. Uh, Simon also did not reject to come to Juba to take over when he was appointed uh, by the presidential degree, did not refuse to come to Juba, but he asked, he does not want to come to Juba as long as the peace security arrangement is not implemented, he doesn't want to leave uh, his, uh, his forces behind that they will have been uh, protecting him for a very long time, uh, going to uh, crossing from here from Juba up to uh, Bargazal, you know, the Dinka territory area, up to come to the Nuer and Unity State and back to Jungle. So he was, you know, was, was protected by these uh, young people who also wish him, he wished them that to be a part of the, any agreement to, you know, to be implemented. And the same thing also on his way to Congo. 
So it, it looks like the, the peace agreement is not yet, uh, is, is, is not, is declining. There's no peace agreement according to him. Great, thank you both. Ferry, do you have anything to add to that? Not too much. Uh, I, I agree with Ball. It's, uh, it's a gradual decline of the relationship between, between Simon Gottwich and, and Riek Mashar, which reached a, a boiling point. And there's also, of course, a materialistic argument of why now? Because I think with, with Simon's, with, with Riek Mashar's um, appointment of Simon as presidential advisor or nomination and Selva Kiel's appointment, it became obvious for, for Simon Gottwich that, that Riek Mashar is not counting on him in the in the future uh, military structure because if he's out of the of the io if he's out of the military not as chief of staff then most probably there won't be a, a high command position in the necessary unified forces and that can be said also of johnson Oloni, who 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 never became governor of unity the uh, upper nile state and it caused all these problems so there is this materialistic argument but i think there is something more behind and i agree with with ball that the that they, they, they were trying for three years to, to get Riek Machar to talk to the troops and they refused, he refused to come, they refused to go to Juba because the peace is not implemented and, and this reached this boiling point uh, at this moment. And I also think there is not, it's not a moment after careful planning because we see how it played out. It's not particularly playing out well for Simon Gatwich. So this is not something that was, you know, in the, in the making for a long time. Maybe Bo disagrees with that, but I don't think it was very well planned and then, then exercised because it, uh, it, it haven't achieved a lot of things that I think Simon Gatwich and, and Johnson Oloni hoped to achieve in the, in the first few weeks of the, of the Kitwang Declaration. So it seems like very important to remember what Bo is saying, that we have to understand the split relative to the stagnation of the SSR process and the general non-implementation of the peace agreement. And I wanna come back to that um, during the second half of the webinar. But for now, I just wanted to know from each of you, so since this declaration, what's been the response from within the IO? Have there been a lot of commanders who've come on side and who've joined Olon and Gatwich? Or have people started to have remained with Mashar? We've also seen some people join the government from this. So what's been the sort of general disposition of the IO's forces and the, their response to this split? And perhaps if we could begin with Bol and ask you to talk about the greater Upper Nile region. Yeah, you know, the, when Simon began to, was closer to uh, Simon and Johnson and, and Mabot, the three some generals who decide the declarations, uh, they, they decide to have some kind of, of the military parade, military campaigns within their own headquarters because uh, Magenis is one of the stronger hall of the SPLMIO headquarters of the division one. And Simon uh, was hosted there uh, when he left Khartoum to stay with, and also Dr. Riyak, have the strong force that belong to his bodyguard called the Tiger Group. You know, because these are the, the bodyguard actually mainly within his own, uh, uh, you know, battalions that he has, uh, you know. Uh, so now uh, the, the debate was based that they don't want to fight among themselves. Those so who believe that the Torea, what he's, what he's doing and people have to wait for it, please, move your camp, stay there and let us not fight, okay? So that debate was there and was also nobody going to be shoot or nobody that was because we don't want as a friends and also, you know, uh, a comrade uh, in arm in the same movement. We should not end up fighting among ourselves. That was a debate. It took almost about a week also. Uh, and that debate was, was it actually politicized the mindset of, of the militant group because uh, uh, there were some events before when the dealing was removed and then also dealing come with the military hardware where there was, which was displayed in so many places and the SPLM uh, currently reaction uh, re did not deny all the accusation that mounts 
that there was some com some arms was given to the, some loyalists to you know to his uh, leadership. So 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 uh, that that debate was there, and then to 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 make sure that there's no any fighting among the the that's at the IO. Now, when some move to Tiger headquarters of which we believe to be a faction of Riyadh uh, border guard, and then they, this group they are the one who went to attack, you know, the the uh, the, the Magenis, uh, Division One headquarters. So and this is how the fighting happened across the board. Simon also was communicating all the forces of SPLA IO who believe they belong to they're supporting us. Please, if you are the majority, leave the forces of the Toriak, go wherever they think that is possible, peaceful for them, that will to leave, and then we, we remain as we are. So now that is a security a small security group that tried not to to, to you know to engage themselves in fighting within the one movement. But the but the question I'm actually trying to I, I, I want to answer your question in a different way. Uh, in Upper Niles, the SPLA IO uh, was uh, since 2013, the organized forces had milled down or disintegrated into the community. And, and the community is always, the community forces are led by the White Army. And the White Army, they're the one who actually fighting in Malakal, and also they're the one who are fighting also in. Uh, in, in, in Juba, I mean, uh, in Jongole and other places. So uh, uh, this group now, they are keeping quiet. They are keeping quiet and they believe that the peace agreement is not there. So the, the conversation among, among them, because some of them, they, they start to have their own different, uh, you know, lifestyle, and also some of them went to business. Some of them they still have their own thinking, how to, uh, to how to revisit war again. Some of them they become they went to education because majority of the young men they are in Ethiopia, Khartoum, and other places. Now there's a general dis discontent that the peace agreement is, is, is collapsed. So, and then Simon is putting that message that there's no peace. It's a it's a big debate. There's no any response from Juba, believing you know, communicating the peace agreement is there. It's not. It's no. It's a debate about how to power power sharing continue. A military uh, high command structure will continue, and there's no agreement up to this up to this point. So, so and then Simon also is saying that it's for peace up to now. So, so he put everybody in dilemma, uh, but. There is some kind of a, of a movement going on in the mind of people that in, in Great Upper Nile, that the war is maybe imminent. So uh, there may be a war, but to fight who and who, that we don't know. Is it, are they gonna fight an SPLMIO supporting Dr. Riak and support of Simon? We don't know. So the government only what they are doing at the moment is actually to put the pressure that, that they should actually have a talk based on what happened. So, so, so in, in, and whoever general decide that supporting react to me it is it is relevant because who are their forces? The containment site area, some of them they melt down, they run away. Those who have been only those maybe in Equatoria because they have no option. But the new, the Great Upper Nile, majority of the young people who say that there is a peace agreement, after Simon declared this, now they put a big question mark that they may not be, you know, willing. To to uh, to go to or waiting for something that the Tordiak is going to offer something as a peace agreement. So, but the question is that also they're asking, what is this, what is the interest of Simon? Uh, what is uh, will Simon be able to you know to to offer what React was not offering, or will be just people continue the way they were struggling in terms of logistic in the fighting there, and if not if there's no fighting. What is the new strategy for Simon? This is what they're waiting for. Thank you both. That's really interesting because one of the ways you can read that is to see Simon basically as a figure sort of created of Simon's separation by the dissatisfaction with the peace agreement. That for young people across the country who are waiting for integration in the army or they're waiting for the SSR process to actually work, that frustration finds its expression in the split. 
But then the, yeah. that sort of positions him actually as the head of a potentially huge movement, which is everyone who's annoyed with this peace process, which is, you know, most people. But then the question is, if that were true, then what's the response like to the split so far on the ground in other parts of the country? And for that, we're going to turn to Ferry. Yeah, I think Bol really nailed it in the in the head. I think it's uh, it's it's very in, very important to differentiate um, the popularity of an idea of, or, or an argument. Um, so there are three levels. So there's the popularity of an argument or or a vision. There's the popularity of a person, and also the people's willingness to follow this person into rebellion. And these are vastly different levels. And, and I think Simon Gatwich might have miscalculated here, because I think what the core argument of Gatwich is twofold. One is the peace agreement is basically dead, or at least it's a living dead, until the security arrangements at least are not implemented. I don't even talk about all the rest of in, you know, the, the other chapters. And second argument is that the security sector reform is a joke. It is going nowhere, not even a step closer to the, to the national army. And his message to the soldiers and the, the members of the white army is that, hey, you fought for these guys. Now they are in Juba, enjoying hotel life, enjoying the V8s, enjoying you know, the girls and the wives, while they forgot about you, took away your guns and left you in the cantonment or training sites without food, without salaries, medicine, far away from your families. And he, he can say this genuinely because he was not the, one of those who went to Juba. You know, he remained with his forces. So he is, this, this is a very popular message. And it's not only popular in, uh, in, uh, in, in Greater Upper Nile or in newer territories. It's, it's a very popular message in Western Barra Gazar among the Fertit soldiers. It's very popular in, uh, in Equatoria among Gaio soldiers. Uh, this is something that I think everyone can resonate to. However, this does not lead automatically to rebellion. And I think that which also have not learned the lesson of, of Sirio, for example, because Sirio's message of the need of a regional federalism, of the need of equal distribution of resources and equal distribution of positions. That's, that's also extremely popular uh, for the food soldiers and not just in Equatoria. However, there's a huge step from, from a popular idea of how you implement. And this is what Ball said that, okay, we, I think a lot of people have to see if, if Gatwich is able to deliver. And I think that's why we don't see big declarations. We don't see a lot of things, but what we see is that a lot of the commanders on the ground, and I agree with Ball, it's quite irrelevant if a commander whose forces are in cantonment and maybe have you know, 10 bodyguards, what he's deciding about. But we don't see big declarations because I think people are waiting for the dust to settle and they see if, if, if Simon Gatwich is able to, to deliver. Like supplies, weapons, whatever, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks, Ferry. So do you think, both of you, that's why, so, and I'm answering a question from the audience has posed, that so few of the IO have commanders have come out and backed Gatwich. So in unity, it seems like no one has come out in support of the split. Whereas in Upper Nile, there are stories about some of the low in Huai, in Pieri, um, coming out, but that they've been um, told not to by the command structure, and of course, Wanyak, the deputy of Gatwich Dual, also Lao, has actually just retaken his place as commander of Sector 3. So do you have that sense that people are waiting for the dust to settle, seeing what Gatwich Dual will do before coming out potentially in favour, which is to say that one shouldn't read the apparent lack of support at the moment as an absolute lack of support, but just something in which the commanders are being... Um, I've been cautious and waiting to see what plays out on the ground. Bol, what do you think? Yeah, well, you know, this question of who to, to, to support who, to me, is some sometime is actually leading us to some argument, which is an endless argument. <laughs> you know, so because that is uh, something that some of us will, will be put in that word of saying that you are not telling the truth. But the bigger political idea is what uh, have been just the last speaker uh, spoke, uh, speaker was you know uh, narrating uh, the the peace agreement the the general the generally have been accepted is not working and it's not going to work so Victoria and his group and, and and the group that's supporting him the whole I, the whole the bigger question on, on this they have been removed and and 
and who will say that a marker for for Simon is the removal of React as a commander in chief. Okay, so and 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 React have been in thirty years as a as a leader of 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 the movement supported by the massive newer community. They have a depth of generation that giving have been supporting him, and and the fear and then some. Some commanders also identify with him, you know. It's uh, it's, it's that there, and uh, but uh, even those who may say, "I'm with Riek, I'm with other with, with Simon." Uh, this the the scenario of 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 of, of, of Juba, the strategy of surrendering, you know, a peaceful surrendering, of uh, the Nue did not believe that they have been defeated. Okay. And, and they also, and then also, there is not there is no denial from the SPL and MIO that Dr. Riak, which of course the accusation they put by Simon, that Dr. Riak is in prison. There is no any any uh, any any response to this. That Dr. Riak is a free man who can go to address the issues in certain areas concerned. So so anybody, including myself, I can identify myself. I'm I'm for Dr. Riak and. And, and we are hundred percent, you know, uh, better off. But I, I might be also telling not the truth. So the question is that the people in the ground, okay, they are they are saying that there are no peace. The peace they do not have. Even here in Juba, you know that there is some kind of even next on Monday they are talking about the removal of these guys, you know, in the, by demonstration. So okay, here is the, in Juba, and the thing are not working, and and the guy from Piri or whatever who have no connection with Juba. Talking with a satellite telephone with somebody, there's no television, there's no internet working in there. These are a few groups. And then I cannot count with individuals who are talking in the ground there. But the general discontent across the country, you know, is, is actually, you know, this is the most important thing. Whoever element, you know, it is just like, you know, we have a sport, some sport, you know, controlled by uh, uh, in, 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 in Afghanistan by a certain group. And then we don't, you say, you know, the Taliban is not in. Uh, in Kabul, that will be not a good idea. But I think the most important thing, uh, it, the, the real question will be, it really, really it, did people of SPLM or I will accept removal of Riyak as a leader of the SPLM, you know, to go back to war? Or, or there is a, another way of saying that, okay, Simon, you cannot do it. It is heavy work for you. And then, uh, the peace agreement is not working. Can we talk about this issue? Who to lead it? As, as, that is something different. So now you can also you have a political bureau, or I don't know, resign and so on. So I think the the political issues now, the military senior high commanders, three of them, who also defeat you know the IO leadership uh, uh, in in the area, the the guard or, or loyalists, and now they are to be defeated by those. Uh, who may be saying that they, they have no support? Why do they fight? Why do they def defeat in this guy? We mean that, and there's no any reinforcement coming other places mm -hmm. to defeat them on, in, you know, in the territory. This is actually the big question. Thank you, Bo. And that's a, a wise warning against the bean counting of commanders who, as you say, may be saying one thing and feeling another. That being said, Ferry, do you want to give us a sort of breakdown of? Western Barakhazal and what's been happening in some of the country on the ground? Uh, yes, just very briefly. I think Christopher mentioned about the rollouts. I hope there will be also text of the IO split um, in the coming weeks. And there it will be a bit more detailed. Um, I don't want to you know, bombard you with, with, with hundreds and thousands of names. Um, let's start with Western Barakhazal just very briefly. Um, the message of, of Gatwich is well received. The message of Gatwich is popular. And there are commanders who are sidelined, the, the, the basic commanders of, of IO who are still possessing forces. So this, this is just what, what Ball mentioned, is that we should imagine IO as basically two forces. One part of IO is in training without arms and ammunition. Um, they are basically prisoners in, uh, in, in training side, overseen by by SSPDF. Um, and as long as these forces are not graduated, they will remain there or they go home and abandon their, their places. 
some commanders because they knew that this will happen or feared that this will happen, rejected to contribute a lot of their forces and, or their best forces. And two of these commanders are in Western Barak, uh, Abdullah Ujang and, and, and Musa Daikume. They were the division commanders. It, it, right now it is only Musa Daikume. It again shows the irrelevance of who is a division commander and who is not uh, in, in SPLAIO any longer. Abdullah Ujang still controls a significant force south from Bau uh, on Bazia and, and controls the road to... to uh, to Western Equatoria, while his ally and, and fellow Fertit commander Musa Daikume controls Raja with the, with the roads to, to Darfur and Kafia Kinji, and he has very lucrative deals. So these guys at the moment are interested in the status quo because they are you know, economically profitable for them. Nevertheless, they, the main goal, I was talking to a few people in Western Baragaza, the main goal for these Fertit commanders is to avoid I mean, they came up with the, with the parallel of, of the Shilluk, very interestingly. We would like to avoid, you know, to what happened to the Shilluk to happen to us, that they are chased away from their territory and they're chased away from their town of Malakal. We don't want Wau uh, to not be controlled by us. So the main, the main argument now, or the main tension is about the relocation of the headquarters of Wau County. And the government is pushing for the relocation to, to Bagari, and these commanders, and so far, the IO leadership is resisting this. And I think as, as long as the, the governor, uh, IO governor of Saracleto is able to resist this move from the government, she is in a safe position and Machar is in a safe position that these guys might not leave him. However, you know, as we discussed, it can happen that, that these people decide that they will, that they will join uh, uh, that which we also know that they are in talks with uh, with uh, fertile elements of, of NAS uh, under Thomas Cirillo. We also know that there might be, well, we don't know, but there are allegations of weapons, not only for Aspire IO from Darfur, but through them also to, 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 to NAS. Um, so that's a, it's a very fragile territory where this can play out in, in various ways. Uh, in Eastern Equatoria, it's, it's again a bit tricky. It's, very, it's far away from everything else. So Eastern Equatoria, everybody has to be even more cautious because you don't have the Sudanese border where you, which is like, you know, might, might offer you some kind of safety. Although that's again a question that I maybe might get into later. Um, in Eastern Equatoria, the sector commander already left his position. He is in Khartoum, Justin Akudo. He is a former commander in the Sudanese armed forces. So unlike a lot of the IO commanders, he was not coming from, from the SPLM. Um, and he, he had a, a tension with his division commanders and he felt that he's not supported by Riek and he's already in Khartoum, presumably in talks with Simon Gatwich, whom he knew for a long time and they, they fought together for a long time. Um, for how many of these soldiers and forces and commands or like troops would join him? That's another question. People also say or told to me from Eastern Equatoria that it's, that it's very tense um, there were, of course, Riek Machar tried to do whatever he can, so he ordered his um, co governors, deputy governors and commissioners to call the communities and try to talk to them. So there were always the message of like, you know, try to avoid infighting. That's the most important thing. Don't, don't do infighting because then that's the government who is, who is winning. Um, but that's already like, you know, a, a tricky tricky argument from, I mean, you know, if you are really feel that you are in power, then you don't feel from that perspective. Then you say that, you know, there's nothing to, to be worried about. So I think it's, it, it covered the fire with a layer of, of dust or a layer of whatever, but the fire is not out and, and it's smoldering beneath. And the, the, mostly in, in, in Greater Akobo, so in Northern Jongla, in Lone territories. What we see so far, of course, this is secondary because we haven't been there for quite some time, but we talked to several people. And what we see there is there's, Simon Gatwich is very popular. Simon Gatwich, they, they claim, you know, he's our son. Riek Machar might be our leader, but Simon Gatwich is our son. And we know that the White Army, especially the Luanwer White Army, is very close to, 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 to Simon Gatwich. Um, and so far, nothing happened. So far, nobody really claimed. There are rumors that, you know, uh, brigades in, in Lanky and brigades in, uh, UA might, you know, defect and, and, and go to Simon Gatwich. There was already like, you know, 
long, long discussions of not to do that, please, guys. Um, but so far, again, just like any other places in the country, what we see is like is more or less calm, more or less trying to keep control. But but I was told by by two people indifferent from each other is that this happens as long as Simon Gatwich does not decide to go to to loan where area and start recruiting. The moment he he would show up, that would completely change. And I stop here. Okay, thank you, Ferry. So what does Keir make of all this? I've heard two different stories. They're both totally contrary stories, and I'm sure Bol's gonna tell me that both stories are wrong. So the first story I've heard, and here I wanna to come to some of the audience questions, is that the government is behind the split, or at least encouraged it, that, he, that the government gave money to Simon and Olon for the split. And that, of course, from a certain perspective, the split is fantastic for the government. It totally weakens the opposition. It threatens a split within the Noor, also a split between the unity Noor and the low Noor. That was what some people in Jonglei were saying they feared, was this sort of, that the split creates this falling into um, total insignificance, oblivion of the opposition, and the Noor must remain united. So that's one story. One story is, Kier is rubbing his hands at this. This is fantastic. He may or may not have engineered the split, but he certainly likes it. I've also heard the opposite story, which is that right now there are IO and SSPDF troops in Wadakona, and they're going to come down and they're going to hit Alon in Atar and get him off the east bank of the White Nile, that they're going to come down to McGuinness and they're going to chase the, the um, Dwatches, Gatwich's people into Sudan. I have to say, I find that second story a bit less credible because of the very peaceful way the IO, thus far, relatively peaceful way, the IO and Gatwich's people have split, right? Like, so in places like Kodok, the Agwalek are leaving to um, go to other bases, to go to Agwalek bases without there being very much fighting. But these are the two stories. On the one hand, Kia loves this split. It's going to allow him to cement even more power. It makes Mashar even more dependent on him and his largesse. On the other hand, now the he hates the split and him and Mashar are going to um, gang up together and chase Dwal all the way to Khartoum. Bo, which story is true? <laughs> oh, Joshua, yeah. Well, I think your political philosophy, you can even create those scenarios. So that's what's really nice, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I have my own stories also, but I just deal with your stories. Uh, uh, I think we both agreed, Salfa or the government will be happy to see any any political opponents disintegrated in, 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 in so many ways. Number one, that the leadership that's supposed to come to reform the country and is now is not is not will is the agenda of reform is not there. The accountability is not there. Nothing going to happen. You know, hybrid court, name it all. You know, the whole thing is go to normal. You know, let everybody go to where it's actually left. And then, and if Riyadh also joined uh, to revisit the Russia uh, kind of uh, reunification, let's be at my own. Their position on number two is there, and it can wait for another, you know, another round for election, when the election happen. So those, those scenarios can be accepted, can, can happen. And also, uh, the, the joint, operation of the two forces, it, it can be also possible. Why not? Because uh, it can be something like uh, the, 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 uh, the, the assumption of the government may be also saying, uh, yes, uh, what we expected was not, was not like that. So the agenda is out of hands. It's going to the EGAT. You know, EGAT is now coming up with something that we are not, we are not inviting them. So these are local internal issues that will be resolved politically without making big, who is Simon Garwaj anyway? You know, they can, they can say like that. But the real picture to me, the way I look at it, you know, with, with, with all these good, nice, nice stories, and which of course, I think the first one with the government, uh, uh, that the government gave money or whatever it is, it has been, and the stories of the SPLM, I we always believe, that the government have money and we are vulnerable and we are suffering for many years. Some are some of their elders, 
even 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 uh, uh, if you hear uh, what this guy said in Arabic uh, during the declaration, uh, uh, what is his name, uh, General J Johnson Uloy. Johnson Uloy was saying that you know those soldiers who have been in in containment site, their women have been even now taken by the SPDA because they are SPDA by the money. So why do we keep this thing is actually destroying our, our family? So we should actually go beyond this. We actually, this is enough. We should not buy this peace agreement that destroying our family. Now, the, uh, the, 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 the most important thing on this issue of government having hand on this is actually come from the SPLM IO. Uh, uh, and if you, if you read the first uh, SPLM political bureau res resolution, the end of this actual activities or declaration of Kigum, or Kigwang, Kigwang was actually pointed by the SPLM leadership uh, bureau meeting in Juba saying, these are the people who are actually behind this. So of course, you know, the government also uh, play, play down, they do not respond that they also, they, they want to create some kind of a doubt that, that they might be the one who did, who, who did it. So that, you know, to prove it, that also you not know, to give Simon some kind of, of support because the genuine supporter will say, oh, this guy, they might be true. Why the government is not re reacting to the SPLMIO uh, political bureau resolution? So, so, and also the SPLM political bureau resolution also uh, give a, 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 you know, a moral question that anybody that been brought to join that that group ca cannot work. Are we there? Yeah, we still get you. Oh, no, at this very moment, you've frozen, Bol. Ferry, while Bol returns, do you have anything else to add to that um, question? Just that I think the two stories are not exclusive to each other. And we know that there have been talks before the uh, declaration of Simon Gatwich between the group of Gatwich and, and the government. So the, the spokesperson of Gatwich um, is called uh, William Gadjia Deng, uh, went to Juba, which was a very unusual move in late June. And then he met uh, Akol Kor, which is a story that, that he told to several people. So of course this has to be taken with a uh, you know a pinch of salt. But uh, but we know that there had been talks uh, before the declaration between the government and 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 the group of Gatwich. It's a possibility that they encouraged him. You know I don't think it 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 it, it was by money. It might have been just you know that that um, just by words that you know this. If if you if you make this step, we might you know acknowledge you as the leader of. Uh, of IO, we, we only have problem with React, we don't have problem with IO. So that, that, that can play a role, but I don't think that was the main role, but, but, the, the, but there was talk between the government and the, um, SS, especially NSS and the, uh, and, and the group of Gatwedge before the declaration. Great, thank you, Ferry. Bo, if you unmute yourself, there we go. Do you have anything else to add um, to your dissection of the stories? Yeah, well, the you know the the, the whole thing is this. I, I what I what I'm uh, your question is that uh, I don't think the government have a hand. To this this is what I want to try to communicate. But the government uh, want to negotiate with something that they wish. But the whole thing now is out of the hand of the government. After the EGAT jumped to the you know to to the bandwagon of reconcil reconciling. So the government is not wanting this. They want it to be more local, like what happened to James Kong, like other things, you know. But also this one is different from James Kong than any other group because uh, they have supported by the heavy handed military uh, commanders who also uh, want to have, who question the, the peace agreement itself. So, so, the, so, so it's, 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 it's not that, as, as usual, and, 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 and the Sudan, which also have his own interest in some point, jump into this and have got his own other issues. So this, so this is how I look at it. So the agenda is bigger than what the government was actually expecting. 
Great, that seems all true. So coming on to one of the things you said, what's the reaction been like in Khartoum to the split? Because there's been accounts, for instance, of SAF intervening in clashes in Magennis. There's been stories that the RSF has been backing Mashar, but um, parts of military intelligence linked to the old regime have come down on the side of Gatwich. I don't know if any of those stories are true, but what's the reaction been in Khartoum from the various factions to this split? Bol, over to you. Well, you have to know also Simon and Johnson and Mabor, they have a file in the military headquarters. They used to be as part of SAF. So is it, is, uh, these are the friendly forces that not 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 Noriag, <laughs> Noriag and, uh, and Salfa, so they are not friendly. So and then uh, they have some they have some kind of thing. So they well, I wouldn't be surprised that they might be uh, getting some kind of splitting the idea of of, of the military headquarters in Khartoum. Uh, in, in 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 government of, of, of Sudan, yes, they 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 host the the IGAD with a concern issue that they don't want peace you know, to disintegrate. They want peace to be you know, to prevail. Then also some element have been accused of giving some logistics to these individuals. Of course, the government of South Sudan also have been heavily armed by Sudanese armed forces. They bought the you know the ammunition, the rest. So so and and actually they said it's a free market. They, they, publicly they said free market. But the question: Did Simon and Johnson have money? I doubt it. They don't have money to buy. At least they get something somewhere. So yes, the the staff they have some kind of element. But they are not supporting these guys. They are not supporting. But they 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 will not allow these people to be put into the you know into position of this, this, you know desperation of of military uh, to be to be to be completely defeated or to intensify the war in that matter because you know the Agolek the division one is actually. Uh, not only the Shuluk, that the that the bulk of the newer after Johnson made, you know, the, the majority of these forces, I can say half half newer in the Shiluk. So and uh, intensify the war in Northern Upper Nile will also uh, will have uh, percussions, and particularly in the oil fields, and at the same time also with the border of the Blue Niles, and at the same time be also watch out, you know, mindful for you that you have to know that there's a, a war of Ethiopia can actually reflect in in that region, which is close to the Blue Nile, and 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 that the the, the and and the Sudan have that kind of of analysis, not the way the South Sudan are putting it, like I O and business and all this. So the whole thing can jump into something different and take people back, and most likely the the commanders, the government will not allow them to go to get to the border of Ethiopia, um, by the uh, being the other side, which is very desperate need for. This region, so so is a better kind of, is a, is, a, is a big business there. Mm -hmm. That's a really dangerous possibility for the region. What's the reaction been? Do you think from Hemeti um, to this? Because there's been such from Hemeti. Again? What do you think the reaction's been from the RSF commander, the Galo Hemeti, because he's had such close relations with Tukyu and with members of the government in South Sudan. What do you think their reaction's been to the split? Well, you know, just, you know, what I, uh, I met with Tut myself. And uh, my understanding, even though it was not clear enough, uh, the idea of weakening react or IO in some point is also uh, that attitude, is, uh, that element is there. And, uh, and, but the misunderstanding, I mean, the, the, the perception of localizing it within the SPL and IO by the government it is actually it's too dangerous because uh, the, the, the political element which came into this from the SPLM IO defectors is actually moving uh, you know, the agenda into something different because there's now political, there will be political discussion, political agenda. It will not be just you know, on, on the commanders that to deal with this. So uh, for, for uh, MAT, I think Meti, why he did not come to Juba, only I'm I'm okay. It's because the issue is actually been raised by Egad, you know, and 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 the seriousness of Sudan government on on what I just mentioned about the Ethiopia issue, 
you know, that uh, that's why, and also Abdelaziz is also, is, is, is try to decline from, from peace agreement and, and the build up of those kind of political agenda in the, in the horn here, it seemed to be more dangerous. The Sudanese, I can understand it, even those of Tudors, even the, the government of South Sudan, they understand it, but they still playing the, the devil, you know, uh, advocate around the region but it's not going to help in some point. So, uh, and I, I don't understand, but the only thing that I don't know, if those of Simon and Judge and, 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 uh, and, and Johnson, plus Mabor and, 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 and Henry Odoar, understand this kind of game happening. But I believe people like, uh, uh, some people like uh, Pagan and, 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 and Eteng and, and Thomas Cirillo and the rest, they understood, they understood that uh, opportunity rising up in the region so that they can, they can play it out. And those Simon group and the rest, they can use, the, they're, they're very strategic in that area. Great, so I wanna come back to the region and to IGAD in IGAD under Hamdok and whether it's a paper tiger as one of our attendees suggested. But first I just wanna deal with what's happened to the political wing of the IO in reaction to the split. So the most high profile politician to come on board with the IO is Henry Odwar. And Ferry, maybe you'd like to kick us off with what type of political figures have joined the splinter group um, of the IO and in particular who Henry Odwar is and why him joining the IO is significant. And then we can come back to Bol to ask the same question. Okay, um, I, I will either speak about Henry Odwar, but I will be very cautious because I know that Bol is, uh, knows him much better than I do. So. So I'm calling out Bol to correct me if I'm if I'm saying anything stupid no about this issue. But the I think the so starting with, with the definition of Henry Odvar, I think the, the the core here is that Simon Gatwich knows that he, as a sanctioned military commander or Oloni or or Mabior, will never be accepted as a political face of a movement if they are striving for any kind of political legitimacy or international recognition. So they needed um, a well-accepted politician, a soft-spoken, educated, popular uh, leader, preferably somebody from a, a, a non nuer uh, to take over the political wing. And Hen Henry Odwar, he's, a, he's an elderly Lango politician, but still not too old. Uh, he served as the deputy chairman of Esperi IO. He was the minister of mining in the government of national unity. He held several positions before. He was the highest ranking Equatorian in the entire Esperi IO. And he was one of the most popular politicians uh, in the movement. So, you know, he's a, it's like a match made in heaven for, for Simon Gatwetch to, to have somebody like Odvar leading the political wing. I'm, I'm very curious on Bol's opinion on, on how this will play out and, and if I'm reading this right. And what is in, interesting, I think, in, in, in Henry Odvar is, is that Riek Wachar nominated him to lead one of the most important ministries under IO control, which is the Minister of Mining because he trusted Odvar. Odvar served as basically his personal emissary while he was under house arrest in South Africa because Henry Odvar is also a Canadian citizen. He could, he could travel on his Canadian passport basically anywhere um, while uh, Machar was in house arrest. And I think his defection was so surprising for, for Riek Machar. And I think it, it, it came to him as a shock that for a day, even after a full day after the announcement of, the, of his resignation, the SPRA IO leadership still believed genuinely the official story that he went for a medical leave. He was already in Khartoum and he had talks with, with Simon Gatwich. Nevertheless, they still you know, maintained the, the, the official line and just the day after when, when he was announced that he joined the Kidman faction, they acknowledged that, yeah, he really left. And, and, and I think it's very noteworthy, just before I pass it on to Ball, to mention here that Henry Odvar is not the latest of the highest ranking Equatorian uh, politicians in the SPLM IO defecting and leaving Riek Machar and joining rival factions. In 2016, his predecessor, Alfred Ladugore, is a Bari politician who served as Riek Machar's deputy and then again as a minister of interior. He decided to join Tamandenga in, in July 2016, again as a shock for, for Riek Machar that, uh, that, that, that he left him. And Henry Odvar was promoted to deputy chairman of the IO by Machar after the defection of Ladugore. And now I see now a repetition here. And, and I'm very, very much curious about Ball's idea of, of the importance of Harry Odvar's. 
Ball. Well, uh, I think you, you said it all, actually. But uh, what I can add, uh, Henry and I, we've been together in Parliament, uh, in the first Parliament, 2005. He's a very, you know, a joyful, he likes politics, he likes talking, you know, he likes ideas, uh, you know, and, uh, and he's a very uh, enthusiastic person in any issue that is true. Uh, yes, uh, Henry, uh, he came from Eastern Equatoria and, and Torit. And you know, in South Sudan, there are certain areas where people are actually cultured with certain, certain things. The people of Eastern Equatoria have been, you know, you know, have been seen as the, one of the states of the patriotic state of South Sudan from the historic background. So, so Henry, he have that kind of attitude of nationalism, okay? So when he joined the SPLMIO, he left parliament. It's not the first time for him to resign to something. You know, he resigned in parliament and he joined the Bush alone. You know, there was no any other equator. But he agreed with, uh, he got his own followers. He had been elected in parliament, you know, uh, in the parliament, he contested, he was also, he have a constituency that he actually defeat, you know, his opponents. So it, it, it's, it's not a lonely jumper. He's a, somebody who have a, uh, have a supporters, I think. Uh, that is him. And also when he decides with, uh, with the, to, to join the, uh, the forces, it's the same frustration because he was the head of the, of the missions. This is an important thing that he should, done, he should, should actually emphasize. Henry is the one keeping the file of the agreement. He's the one who was sending to Juba to come as an advanced team. He's the one, and Angelina was uh, was our supporter, subordinate to you know, to support the deputy chairman to come to, to for peace implementation, and for him to resign, because what what he was been doing is actually exactly the same uh, what Taban was uh, was assigned. Taban joined the government, then Henry jumped out. And then uh, it started value. That's the difference between the both guy, two guys, you know. So, so, so I think joining the forces morally is, is said even if they have some health issues, which most of the IO knows and others. But he said, "I long have a breath and I can say no." Then I have to say, it, even in the death in the death machine. I think it was it actually did it in a moral basis. Is, you know, is, is you know his decision. Now, you yeah, you you asking only Henry would work, but if I can also pinpoint somebody like you, my Burgram, my Burgram is also people think that you know try to undermine him of his age and the style of his way of, of behaving himself, but it's a, it's, a, it's another it's, you know it's another figure, you know uh, apart from being a son of John Graham. And, and, and when he joined the SPLMIO in 2013, he was, the Boer community was telling him that if you join, if you go to the new area, you are going to be killed. They don't, they may not like you. So, and when he reached Nasser and his own controversial his political his way of decision, he was held by many people and particular women in Nasser, you know, and people are surprised with the white army going around, you know, and people are saying that what happened in 2013, if Gurren was alive, your father will not actually happen in, 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 in Cuba. So Mabir also is a very consistent per personality. Uh, he refused, you know, the, the, you know, to take the Minister of uh, Deputy Minister of Interior. He was forced to come to, to accept it. With a, and then the first day he came, he went to Unimis and he said that as long as you guys in Unimis, you know, uh, UN, uh, I mean, uh, uh, UN CAM, uh, the IDPs, as long as you are not coming out in this camp, I don't think that peace for me is something. It means that you are, your eyes are seeing more, more, more things than I than my eye, which means that I'm not going to take the position. And then he gave momentum that he will actually see if the peace is actually moving forward. And then he resigned later on, saying that the peace is not working. So and and now he's also jumping to the military, you know, supporting this. So these are very consistent, and also that the diehard support of Dr. Riak. And I don't think that Riak will not will, will say something bad about them. 
neither we, the members of uh, the SPL members of the IO, will say these are actually traitors. I don't think somebody will be bought by you know who, a minister who led the ministerial position that to be bought and join the the traitors who have been bought in the other side. That actually defeats the question, the first question you asked before Joshua. So there's no any any kind of uh, of uh, money involved on this. Thank you, Bol, for providing assurances to everyone's yeah. uncorruptibility in this matter. Let's return then to the region. What do you think EGAD's strategy is going to be here under Hamdok? And what do you think Uganda's position in all of this is? Paul, over to you. Yeah, you said, what is that? Sorry. EGAD, what do you think EGAD's position is going to be relative to the split? And what do you think the rest of the region, what type of positions will the rest of the region take, Uganda and Ethiopia? Okay, let's say that. Where's the region, first of all? Where's yeah. the region? Where are we now? <laughs> so that that answer most of the question are they so these are the the region are fighting to each other okay Ethiopia versus to you know to proxy war with Khartoum in, in Egypt and then coming also to uh, uh the dam issue that actually that actually create so many tension I think uh uh Khartoum being a share of of, of Igad is is a fantastic time for Khartoum, who also have a lot of stake on this issue of, of, of problem in occurring in, in the SPLM, IO or South Sudan in, in particular, because Su Sudan have a problem of peace uh, Juba declaration, which is not also working. And, 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 and if not, uh, then if they're not careful, uh, the Ethiopian will, will praise or will do a miracle to make it not working because everybody go back to square one. So, so I think for the chairmanship of AMDO, and this is a very important for them to fix the peace agreement in South Sudan so that they have their backyard economically in the oil revenue, which also share almost that, you know, a lion's share in that, that they, they will lose it and also creating another insecurity in, in, in Southern Cote d'Ivoire and also in, 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 in Blue Nile and also losing the oil field in the South Sudan. So I think they can play a, a great role and it's a good opportunity that Sudan are, is now the share of the IGA to fix it. Great, thank you, Bol. What, what do you think REAC's future strategy might be in this situation? What, what, like, what type of thing do you think that Gatwich and Olon and the Splinter Group want? And is it possible to heal the split? And is that something that Mashar would even be interested in? I'll turn to Ferry first with that question. Um, Putting you on the spot. I, I'm a bit unsure about how to answer the question because each time I try to make a prediction on React Mashar uh, in my life, then you know life proves me wrong, because then he did something else that I thought you know to me makes no sense. But uh, I, I I think for him it would make sense. I just don't know if there's a way back. There's like so few positions and possibilities for for, for IO to but to do. Let me, let me say, like give you a scenario. Then one of my um, political philosopher makes up a story stories, mm -hmm. which, as Bull would say, which is. The EGAD comes around and says, okay, what we need to do is, Mashar, you need to sacrifice some of your representation within the government under the RARCSS to Gatwich and Alon. You need to give them positions. You need to bring them back in in the sort of weird repetition of the 2006 Juba Declaration. Does Mashar say, great idea, love it, I'm going to do it? Or does he say, hell no? I will go for the hell no, but I, I'm passing it to Ball. Ball, you've got some stories <laughs> again. Well, actually, you know, uh, Ariag is a, is, 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 is a negotiator. He likes negotiation, okay? But uh, at, at the moment, it's still up to the question of, of the buying uh, or the, the, the political agenda of the, of the general has been put forward by the by the government. But the idea, when if, what the, your question you are asking, uh, if the EGAT actually make a pressure 
maybe they will say, okay, that's fine. Let it not be only for the Iowa because these guys, they become another faction and they got negotiating those guys, you know, to, to, be, to share power. Let all this, not the percentage, let it not be Iowa alone. Let us actually take it around, you know, uh, round it up within the, 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 the party who are power sharing, you know, in the, in the agreement. Each of them can actually have certain percentage and give it to this. And of course, the actually will be clever on this. Of course, uh, these are the Iowa actually taking another share also within the other group, and they are back and they are back to the government. I don't think that the government will 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 be happy with this, and yet may actually try to push it that way if this is if that can resolve the problem. But the it, the, the the issue will go back again with what will be. Uh, will Simon, uh, well, let me put it this way. The scena that scenario may only work when they narrow it into the internal you know, problem of the IO or, uh, alone. But if they want to widen it as a discussion of IGAD, I think uh, this is where the government also will get it difficult because it will go like a Rome, maybe Rome will be upgraded to something, IGAD or more bigger than this and will be also complicated, asking so many demands, and then uh, they will break out. But if you if you put it the way you put it, Joshua, uh, and and Simon and, and and the other group will will accept that. Let it be shared, just as a power sharing. That will be fine. But my question will be my my doubt. I will I'm doubting it may it may go beyond what the the the, the question asks because they may ask a bigger bigger agenda. Yeah, that seems right. I mean, these scenarios are only sort of to play out the ideas and the tensions that are on the ground. So one of the possibilities, and Farah, I'm gonna ask you this first, is are there possibilities of the splinter group to make other alliances, to, to make it less an internal question, as Bowles says, and more a question about secure, the security and the, the situation in South Sudan more generally? So have there been any discussions between the Splinter Group and Naz and Thomas Cirillo, for instance, or between the Splinter Group and Stephen Boy and his forces that may or may not exist in Mayom, which I'm sure Bull can tell us better than me. But over to you, Ferry, first. Yeah, on the f first and foremost, it would make sense. It would make sense for them, you know, it would make sense for, for, for Soma, it would make sense for everybody in Soma, for CDEO, it would make sense for Buai. I think it would even make sense for for that which uh, and the others uh, if it's but the question is is it realistic or no I mean we already see that even within Soma these very strong personalities are cannot keep keep it together you know they are trying to find ways to talk with the government without excluding the others they are not keeping you know their their words to each other and there seems to be a constant fight between Malong and, and CDO of who is actually leading Soma and and is it still one Soma that we are talking about? So I think there's theoretically, and I think, you know, even an ideological level that Ball mentioned, I think it's, we can bring these people together. You know, the argument of, of Gatwich about the failure of the peace agreement and the, and the failure of the secretary sector reform is very similar to the argument of, of, of Cirillo, uh, plus Cirillo's regional federalism, which is, I think, acceptable for for Malone, which is acceptable for, uh, would be acceptable for, 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 for Gatwich, whose movement at the moment is, is, is in Greater Upper Nile. But is that, is that realistic? Are these, I mean, can you put these very strong personalities into the same room with these like very limited support and very li little movements they have? I have my doubt, but maybe Bol can reflect on that more. Re emphasize the question, please. Are there, is there a possibility for Gatwich and Olon to make alliances with Cirillo and Naz or with Soma or with Stephen Boy? Yeah, for sure, they, 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 this, this is a definite, it's going to happen that way. But now I think the, the defectors, they are trying to strategize and try to coming up with, you know, they have opportunity now because there's no war. And, and I'm, I'm sure Henry, who has been given a task to, uh, to, to hit the political wing of the movement, he will be reorganizing him, himself with his own colleagues. You remember that those of uh, uh, the former Secretary General who, were, who, defected long, who resigned a long time ago uh, is now in Khartoum. 
and 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 I think all the all the group who resigned from with the frustration, you know, who have been replacing here and there, you know, uh, who are active in the SPLMIO previously, they try to regrouping themselves, and then they may ask bigger question, because South Sudan will not be actually uh, the IO, the defected. They, I'm sure, they need these people. They need those of Malong. They may need those of Thomas Shirulo, and particular those who have been have a force in the ground. They, 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 they need those kind of, you know, you know, grouping, uh, and, 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 and of course, uh, uh, they need also to, to, to complain seriously to make sure that they, they are in control, they are back to, to political, uh, uh, come back to, you know, either to rebellion and all this. So some panelists, I think some, some people are talking about the power sharing, you know, as is it going to be an idea, but. It, that 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 is an egad that is egad position because the the elite accommodation has been the way forward and you kill people are seeing is failing all the time so will they follow it or not i don't you know this is actually will be uh, a, a position of the alliances later on with egad because egad now fail and it continue to fail and you can write book a judge on this many times and you can prove them failing so, so I don't know uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the the idea of accommodation will be the only way. You know, the country is not moving forward at the moment, and then the the things are not working. And those of those holding out group, they uh, they they are dragging their feet, and they are not being taken serious. Uh, uh, and also, the government have the strategy of dealing with individuals, you know, factions. And I know that they are not also even coherent in terms of even when they go to Rome, they don't talk about Thomas Cirillo and, and his other faction that are divided. Uh, I don't know if Simon will boost the morale of unity among, among this coalition, they can come. And of course, you know, uh, they may be happy with seeing Simon alone, but if those of my Biogarang and, and the guys, you know, uh, like Henry, who also may, may be, uh, if, you know, uh, able to, to control, to control the political wing of the IO, then there's no IO to be to be hijacked by this. But there may be equal opportunity of all opposition, maybe. And, and I, I don't know who is actually in the region will organize this uh, group because they cannot do it in, in, in isolation without any support from the region. You know, I don't think that Khartoum will be happy to see uh, uh, supporting the opposition. I don't know Ethiopia. In the current situation, uh, will be able to support this. At least, you know, you know, some miracle can happen, and alliances can be created in re regionally. It, it, you know, it's possible. But I th definitely, they need each other if they want to continue as opposition. So, Bol, I have to point out in my position as resident philosopher here that you're giving us a paradox. Yes, please. That they need each other, but it would take a miracle for them to come together. Well, there's no miracle in politics, as you well, as a political problem. Yeah, okay, but it's not a problem. No? <laughs> a, you know, that's sure there's no miracle. Yeah. You know, the miracle, you know, in, in, in philosophy on politics, it doesn't work. There's so many thousands of solutions in politics. But the miracle also can be another. But you never know the angel can be sent to, you know, by the, you know, uh, maybe from the hell. So you never know. So, <laughs> so anyway, so I, 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 you are right there. Uh, but, uh, you know, the React is a heavyweight to be in the SPLMIO uh, agenda, okay? I mean, to lead the SPLMIO in opposition and, and to oppose the government. And, and also creating fear with some political whole out group, the, or what they call the whole out group. They, they have no room to see to, to see React. In, uh, in in the in opposition to, into the government, and then they may think that they have a future to lead. But the opportunity can avail to them, seeing Mabiorgaran, and also and they are actually allies. You know that uh, they and the war can be fought by the organized force. You know, uh, and then they can set as a, a leaders. You know, there's some kind of opportunity there. You know, but. The, the personality of, of the individual of the SPLM uh, movement, you know, name it like Pagan and many others. I think there's a big question mark in South Sudan is, 
you know, they, they, they don't differentiate them with React and also with Sulfur and Waniga and uh, Kualmanyang and many others, name it. So the young blood now try to come up with, you know, and those opportunity, they, they, can, they can be seen in, in, in Maganis. Simon is an old man, he's not a politician. Johnson also is the same thing and the rest. And they, if they can fought out a political uh, uh, opportunity for, for a young generation to come up, I think this is the opportunity for them. So this is going to be a bit of a restatement. It's going to go to Ferry. It seems like what one reading of what the splinter want is that they want positions in a power sharing agreement. They want to be brought back within the fold because they were not given the right position. This is the cynical reading. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying this is a cynical position that I've heard espoused. They want the same thing that people claim that Boy and Malong want. They want their seat back in power in the power sharing agreement. But you're suggesting something else, which is that that's not going to be enough. And what's interesting there is that, as you say, both Johnston and Simon are not political figures. They're too old to be really effective politicians. And that's probably partly the reason that Henry coming on board, Henry Lodwar coming on board is so important because they need that political wing. But then what does that actually look like? Because we've begun this seminar and we've said that the peace process is stalled. The peace process is not working. What is it that isn't working? And what would need to start to work for Gatwich and Alon to be satisfied? If we're gonna say the cynical reading is wrong, they're not just interested in positions, but they're interested in something else, bringing up, as you say, this young political class, what needs to be put in place for that to happen? And I'll go to Ferry first. I think if we agree that this peace agreement is not working, then we also have to agree that- What's not working about the peace agreement? Yes, and then we have to agree that the core ideology of this peace agreement is power sharing. And then power sharing is not the solution. When you imagine that with the very same figures that Paul just mentioned, who are you know, the same names and for an average South Sudanese, there's no big difference between Pagana Mum and Salvakir in that sense. They belong to the same class of all politicians. And so if we agree that power sharing is not working, it's an imposition on, on the country. And it's just like, you know, for the sake of peace in Juba, we, 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 we give up. And then basically, I mean, I think with Joshua, we, we criticized the power sharing peace agreement or the ideology of power sharing peace agreement several times, that this is just reconfiguring warfare. And it's basically, we rename war and we call it peace. But on the peripheries, it remains, it remains warfare. And that's what we had seen in South Sudan since 2018. And even bodies like UNMIS Human Rights Division acknowledged that intercommunal violence skyrocketed. You know, more people are fighting than, than before in a lot of parts of the country. Uh, so I think, I mean, you know, I, I can be a very cynical person, but each time I talk to, for example, with Thomas Cirillo, I genuinely feel that he is not really interested in power sharing. He is listening to the to the ideas, he's, he's, he's listening to the, to the offers, but I think he has some kind of core ideology that, that motivates him. And, uh, and from the, the perspective of Ball, that Ball just mentioned here about Henry Odvar and, and Simon Gatwich, there might be a very similar reasoning. And I think, you know, Joshua, you know much more why you can say it's true or not true, but he also might have some kind of, you know, um, of agenda or reform agenda uh, for the country, but I might be completely wrong in this, but I don't like the cynical reading. And I think some of these people do have genuine ideologies that how they would like to change South Sudan. Uh, if they can succeed or not, that's a, that's a completely other question. Yeah. So I pass it to Bo. Yeah, yeah. you know, the, uh, if, you, if, you, if you are talking about power sharing, uh, 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 why do you go back to what they said in the declaration? The declaration actually said about talk about the hybrid court, the compensations of the victim, the security arrangements, you know, all those kind of things. And this, this is where Simon said, if all these things are actually work out for him, is no problem. They should come and follow up. His own, uh, he can come to Juba or go back to his village and stay there or taking the, the advisory position they give. But the, the but the uh, the, the power sharing actually it is the EGAD agenda to to actually to accommodate the elite, and they have been doing it 
and they will continue doing it and they will continue failing and will continue fail. So there's no advocacy or to advocate again a power sharing. How many days and, and, and months and year are men for election to come? You know, Masavin is talking about, you know, to end this issue, let us talk about the election. So the election is a solution. Somebody will beat whether it is a crook election like what happened in, in other regions in, 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 in Africa, including Uganda, then people can endure the issue of uh, the result of the election. And then, and then can end up the elite, uh, 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 the elite kind of, uh, of power sharing. So, so, so the power sharing, as long as you got is a forum, they will continue for, with, uh, for the power sharing, which is not working. So, so the philosophers and our political science scientists like Joshua and John Young and the rest, they should actually invent another wheel that how what will be the doctor said about diagnosing of the South Sudanese, you know, resolution, I mean, political uh, resolution. So, so uh, I think uh, the election is actually is, 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 is near. The institution are not yet working. Uh, then, then the people are not satisfied that they can go for election. But I think uh, the eager need to have some kind of approach, a new approach, to solve this problem. Whether garbage can be can be can be taken if if the negotiation is the way or not the regime change in total, because regime change is this is what you said about uh, about Thomas Shirin. You're talking about you're thinking about the regime change. So if the regime change is impossible to, to happen in South Sudan, then there should be some kind of uh, got uh, to bring something new, whether it is people go for election and have a caretaker government to take people for election uh, in a short period of time, then people let people agree. So, so, so uh, but the power sharing, I don't think is going to work again. And I don't think also, if you take, the idea of the implementation of security arrangement, let's take it. Is it, you know, are we really convinced that these forces who have been frustrated, leaving the camp with full hatred, unite them, bring them tomorrow, arm them, and then you say that um, uh, we've been uniting them, will they will not fight in the street in Juba? I, I'm sure they will. Because why do they fight in 2013 while they've been there together for, for, for many years without any quarreling? They fought. Because the hatred among within, I mean, the political failure within the political elite is actually is injecting into these unorganized armed forces who are also allegiant to their tribes and clans that cannot bring peace in South Sudan at the moment. So even if you unite them tomorrow, with actually because they're rushing now, oh no, because they guard and the region international community that they're saying that the government failing because secure arrangement is not there. It's not true. They are going to they are going to fight, and they will fight. There will be another been worse than than 2013. So so there's a need for another. You know, this opportunity can be used as opening up another another way of of achieving peace in South Sudan and instead of taking things. You know, the way you know that we know that is going to fail. Just only fulfill one, two, three in the, you know in, in in the paper. This is how I this is how I look at it. Thanks both. So in one sense, it's IGAD and the diplomatic community that is the biggest enemy of peace in South Sudan, because what they're trying to perpetuate is this model of elite level power sharing. Am I hearing you right on that? Yes. Okay, great. So I want to encourage our audience to put in questions and I'm going to turn more and more now to the audience's questions and make sure that they're all answered. This one is a really interesting question. It takes us for a moment away from the future, which is what I'll return to, which is, can you, can either of you tell us anything about Magennis? Why is it important? Like, why is that where the forces are concentrated? Is it a place where IO can raise revenue? Can you tax border trade there? Are there other resources? Yeah. Is it central to relations with SAF and with military intelligence? Like, what is a Magennis? Bol, over to you. Yeah, well, actually, Magennis is very strategic. It's actually in the east, eastern Nile, of border with the wide Nile of, of the state of Sudan. We have so many agricultural schemes. Mo most of this land, most of this agriculture, actually, they are in southern side. 
it used to be traditionally you know, uh, uh, cultivated by the farming by the northerners, uh, northern Sudanese uh, farmers, taxed by the Upper Nile estate, and which actually earned taxes by Wulong as a governor of the Fashoda, is actually generated revenue in the Eastern Nile. I mean, in the Western Nile. Then also, you go to the Western, you know, to Western Nile, it is actually also going to uh, uh, Maluth area and also we and 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 and, and Jalhak and and with uh, with 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 a lot of uh, uh, Arab gums because it's including also Maginis, you have Arab gums also, you know. So which is also very lucrative resources that to be, and this is also on the other side of the Western Nile, and the Western Nile of, uh, opposite is the oil field with agriculture and also Arab gums. Going up to the Blue Nile in the Maban, Maban, Maban uh, counties, and then also up to uh, my wood, and my wood, my wood, and other places uh, in 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 Eastern New. So I'll also border with 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 our Sosa in the Blue, and also in the Ethiopia, and as well also to uh, uh, to to Blue Nile in Maban area. We also um, our Sosa. These are the dam of Ethiopia, actually with creating crisis there. The oil is there, the resources are there, you know, and the land also empty. There's no many people in that area. The mobility in the terrain is, is good. And also it link up from the Eastern Nile, which I said earlier, to the to the uh, Nuba Mountain, where opposition forces of uh, of, uh, of Abdulaziz and Malik Agar and the rest are concentrating on that. So it's a very potential area of so many links, you know, of, uh, of the Sudan, as has been also the area also of interest of Egyptian in the southern border of of uh, of of, of, uh, of the Canal Jungle in the other side, so it's a very potential area with a lot of resources. Thank you, Paul. That's really helpful. So, Ferry, this one's for you initially. That there's there have been rumours of forced recruitment of civilians in Southern Unity, including collection of deserters and soldiers registered on the cantonment site by both the SSPDF and SPLA-IO. What do you think the motives of these groups are? And do you think more generally that the split in the IO is a threat to the peace agreement? And just in terms of like possible level, possible future violence and future clashes? Um, I started the second, maybe for the unity, I pass it back to you because you might know more about that. But uh, um, if it's a threat to the peace agreement, I think on the general structural level, I don't think it's a threat to the peace agreement. The peace agreement is as it is, as we discussed it in great detail. Um, I don't think that this split means too much for the average, let's say, Equatorian IO soldier in Irube cantonment site at this moment. If he or his commander is not deciding to join that which and try to move out, because then you know fighting can can happen. There are already reports of several of the. Uh, of the commanders moving out from previous cantonment site uh, to more easily defendable positions in the, for example, the NATO core division in Eastern Equatoria moved to the mountains and uh, maybe, you know, preparing something. But for the moment, I, I don't think. Um, on the forced recruitment on unity, can I pass it back to you because you might know more about the issue of what's going on in unity in terms of forced recruitment in the POC, Joshua? Uh, what do you say? I said that can can I pass it back to Joshua the question on on unity and the forced recruitment? Okay, okay. I mean the so I'll do the same thing as you, Ferry, and I'll ignore that question for a moment and come back to the 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 second question, which is that right, one of the things that I find so surprising, and I'd be interested to know what Bol thinks, is that other than the initial clashes at McGinnis when the troops were disaggregating, it's been a remarkably peaceful separation. And as Bowles emphasized, there hasn't been a sort of sense of denunciation or of even of sort of real anger. There's been pretty um, disciplined disarticulation of the units all across Upper Nile in Kodok, Abu Raj, um, places like that. So it doesn't seem as if this is the spark that leads to violence that sort of brings down uh, what remains of the peace agreement. Yeah, there's, I and mean, just in answer to the question, there have been rumors, as obviously the questioner knows, of recruitment in the cantonment sites in Upper Nile, in, in Unity rather. I mean, I think there's been, 
by a number of different commanders a, a positioning that says maybe I can get something out of this. Maybe this is a time when I can do some more recruitment. Uh, maybe I can now. There's been a potential split from Soa of a commander in Ulang. There's been a variety of different um, political um, negotiations over what the sort of the military potentials of the split are. But I think Bol is really right to say that to sort of dive into those is often bean counting because situation then changes tomorrow. And actually the question I wanna to put to Bol is not about Southern unity, but is that what we seem to have established so far is this, that power sharing is not gonna solve the problem. And even if like at some simple level, power sharing may or may not bring Gatwich back into the fold, power sharing cannot solve the problem that is the peace agreement. But it also seems from what I'm understanding from you, Bol, is that implementing the security sector reforms is not going to solve the problem. In fact, implementing the security sector reforms might now might be a really bad idea for peace. It's one of the cases in which peace is achieved by not implementing the peace agreement. So if that's true, what do we do? Like where, like you said, you say like this is an opening maybe for something better, something outside the mandate of EGAD and internationally mandated elite power sharing. What is that thing? What might be the piece that now we can think about that people like Henry Odwar can think about bringing to South Sudan that's not just elite power sharing? It's an easy question, so I can give it to you. Yeah, well, well, you know, uh, my, uh, little, my little philosophy of these things, we, you can correct it, uh, because the, the experience that we have, it's proven, we, we agreed, uh, but there's a need for uh, well, I entirely agree with the issue of the of uh, of the of the security that might be even jeopardized, even the the peace itself. So there's a scenario which I heard from friends uh, some some time back in Juba, I think last last year, that leave this leave the armed forces in the way they are, create uh, go for the elections. You know, having one commander in chief who will come organize the, the, the country with one voice with his group. Because the power sharing, we have so many, even the, even my satellite should be, you know, a commander in chief. Everybody, they have got your own group, then you become commander in chief of those guys. So, so it's become another recruitment of everybody to go back to the army. So there's so many experience and an example we have been going around in, in Africa and even also beyond Africa. They're creating a, a, a viable state, need to have a, a, a viable institution. So the SPLM, or I mean the, the, the armed forces, they have been a source of conflict and political leadership have been a source of conflict. That's true. So if there, these are the conflicts, why do you actually put a lot of effort to, in, to create them and you give them more money to create more and in the in the season of the problems continue like that. So let them go out from this kind of thing. Create something new. If the power here is the problem, then let country be created to have one a political leadership. This is but what what's the new thing? What is this new thing? What do I think to be created? Um, what mm -hmm. uh, well, okay, listen. I'm looking to you for all the answers, Bob. Yeah, yeah, I know. You give me the opportunity that, that yeah. you want me to, which of course I have no, you know, me and John Young will never have any. We never give an answer at all. So we always say something, and then you have to have an answer for yourself. So, mm -hmm. but my my answer as a person is I think if people go for the election or or a caretaker government with any out of the SPLM kind of thing, okay, with any wranglings, you know, ex, you know, call it technocrat or whatever, to take, you know, like whatever, is it the uh, uh, Mary Jones or is it the, 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 the Liberia or Sierra Leone? I don't know. That 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 country, though so the person who taking country to that lady, I don't know Liberia. the president. There. Liberia. Liberia, Liberia or Sierra Leone. Liberia. Okay, Liberia. So I have a I have a good discussion in Kigali, and she actually gave an example. Then that Liberia is a good example. So we can have a good kind of. You will have a, a security reform with, with well trained, that can actually take your country forward and then creating institution. So somebody who have no ambition to have any 
a long, a long, long stay in the in the government, put things right as a caretaker system, caretaker government. Then, then uh, or franchise the the you know this this kind of uh, security group that to be trained in the long term, that to be you know in separately or the, the, in the way they are at the moment. Let them not be united because if you unite them tomorrow, they fight. They should actually have some kind of arrangement where the leadership of the country will be one, not sharing any power, put the institution right, and then let people go for election. Those of, you know, we're wasting a lot of time at the moment for, for, for six years now that, you know, if you give it 18 months or 20, 22 months or 24 months to catch a government, put the institution right, that thing will be all right. And let me actually end it up with um, Mamun Mamdani, uh, 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 a court. He said South Sudan never been a state. Okay. And and the country has been actually given to the bunch of criminals which actually never have an idea to run. So, and actually the criminal are those who actually the commanders and their own political philosophy who always divide themselves and then run, 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 run away with the resources. This is how, they, this is how you put it. Not me. This is Mahmoud Mamdan. It is actually available on his... Uh, and his, uh, and his statement when he actually launching the minority report in Addis. Thank you, Bol. We should say that that's a, pa a paraphrase of what Mahmoud said. <laughs> yeah, okay. that, is, that, is, that is the gist of it. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I finished that um, obviously wanting Bol to run a caretaker government and be president. But like, given that that at the moment is not the possibility, Ferry, I wonder if you thought, because this is one of the questions we have from the attendees, do you think the split is going to affect and the prognosis of the census and then elections in the next couple of years. And regardless of the split, how do you think those elections are gonna go? Because if we don't have a caretaker, caretaker government, it seems likely that that is what we're facing. Um, uh, okay, so I, I start with the, the first part of the question. I don't think this split would affect any elections. What you need for elections is census. What you need for census is people going out and doing enumeration. And then what you need for elections is people going out and, 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 and voting. This cannot be organized if large parts of the country are insecure and fighting is going on. This split at the moment affected a very tiny part of the country. So I think there are larger and bigger problems in terms of insecurity for any elections. Secondly, the second part of the question is what are the prognosis with election? There are two answers, and I'm always hesitating between the two. I mean, there is a, one very cynical answer, that there cannot be elections in South Sudan. There are absolutely no way to hold credible elections, especially in this very short time frame. It's 2013, 2023, it's two years time. You have to have a census. We don't know how many people live in South Sudan. You have to move back people because you cannot have credible and fair elections if a quarter of the population lives outside of the country or in POC camps. You have to um, somehow somehow have a fair system of campaigning and everything, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's basically no system set up for a fair and credible elections. On the other hand, if you look in history, if you look in, for example, the referendum that was done in 2011, the conditions were even worse than, than now in terms of infrastructures, in terms of a, a, an openly hostile government, this is the Sudanese government that organized. Uh, the census or try to disorganize the census of the southern Sudanese. Nevertheless, the referendum was a great success. It was it was possible to organize. It was it was run, you know, with the help of the chiefs. The threshold that they reached was above sixty percent of the people who went and casted their votes. Um, so you know, there's two these two arguments. The the question is, I think to me the bigger question is what is the point when it's worth doing elections. Is it worth doing elections if we know, I mean, if it's only just a rubber stamp for a new government to have legitimacy, then does it make sense? I mean, right now, if you, if you organize elections, if we leave the South Sudanese state to do elections, it will be SPLM winning maybe almost everywhere. Um, maybe with the exception of Akobo and some parts in, uh, in Upper Nile. But the majority of the country, you know, the majority of the votes in the majority of the country would be SPLM. There's no question about that. Um, the way it would be organized, that would be the result. Um, 
So if it's only a rubber stamp exercise, then I think just pushing the country for elections is, uh, is not honest, is not, is not, is not policy. Um, especially if it is not funded by the international community, then we are asking South Sudan to spend hundreds of millions of dollars because you need uh, a census. And obviously, if you want a credible elections, then it has to be biometric, which means that it has to be like super expensive. Uh, we have seen these examples in Congo. We have seen the examples in Kenya. We have seen the examples in, in, in African countries with much better infrastructure than South Sudan. Even in these countries, it was like super expensive. Uh, so in this case, it makes no sense. If it is, if it is um, a somewhat democratic process that is in line with some kind of regional federalism, in line with some kind of representation in local populations, and, and if there is a kind of contest in these political constituencies for positions, then I think it's a worthwhile exercise. And this is something I think that the international community has to decide. This is where they would like to push South Sudan. And if they would like to push South Sudan only if all the the details are set, or what are these red lines and thresholds? And, and I think they really have to think about this and make conscious decisions on that. Yeah, you know, France, for, uh, France uh, if I just pick it up where you say, you know, because uh, you, you, are, you are talking with a uh, logistical issue, which are correct, the road and all this. You know, how many years that will, even in Juba now, we never been have a road, I mean, a proper road in Juba, apart from uh, the USID will pay actually the money to a road to go to a uh, border of Uganda. Otherwise, you see, you see that nothing happens. So we will be wasting a lot of time uh, waiting for, you know, talking about the power sharing, failing uh, agreement. People now start going back to war. So there's no way forward. The people are talking. The, the only option in South Sudan all, all the time and up to today is the rebellion, go back to war, you know, there's no other option that to be to engage the mind of the people, the mindset. You know, I think if like President Museveni have been actually talking about this, even myself, I was saying it may be because I have been always putting some big question mark on his thinking. Probably maybe try to favor his his, his own supporters. But in fact, uh, we need to engage people with something. You know, apart from rebellion and then regime change with violence. So, so and, 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 and those are strategy that can be also discussed in even in that forum, you know, uh, it's, 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 not a, it's not a problem. Logistic, you know, referendum, when we actually uh, use a referendum, for example, people are seeing that there was no, because referendum was, was a big thing in South Sudan history. It happened. Nobody believed that there should be a referendum, you know, and it happened. So, and, and, and of course, the, the election can actually even defeat some of the element who are actually hiding, using the state uh, apparatus in their own personal relationship with certain leadership. So it can change something. You never know that who will fail. The big, the big shot can even fail for that election. So I think the terrain of South Sudan, due to the right season, if we say that the, the Qatar government will be something for, for some uh, month, or years, then let the party organize the rallies and all this. I know that will be shoot out from 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 all those talking, you know. With you know, now we are lucky. The part the, the the before they become another one party, we should also use the the the, the current peace agreement. We recognize a multi-party kind of agreement. You know, there are so many parties now. The power sharing and those small party in the long run, there can be something. And when, as long as they have a sharp guys who will go around with a free, free, free talking, a lot of things will change. So it will not be a monopoly of, of, of one person. And, and then thing will happen and the international community will see so many opinion coming up. I think it's worth to try that one, so, you know, and, 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 and it, it can happen. So, so I'm, I'm not a fan of, 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 of war again now, but that there, there must be an, an alternative for this. Can, can, can I comment something on what both said? I mean, we yes, even have yeah. in, in South Sudan a history of, of somebody causing a, a surprise. No, when it was Gemma Nunukumba was running against Bakosoro in Western Equatoria in 2010. Yes, yes, sure. Bakosoro right. was an independent candidate. Nobody yes. gave him any chance. That's right. And with a very good campaign, he Absolutely. actually, he actually yeah. beat Gemma Nunukumba. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
absolutely. So, so, so I think I agree with you. So, uh, uh, but the question is this, the elite, why do they drag in their feet that with all, they engage you and me, and many all of us now to engage with, with, with a failed peace agreement and let people talk about how to implement it. And the time is going. Tomorrow, when the thing comes, they will, number one, they will work for ex extension with they actually extended their duration into power. Some of, and, and, and then the end of this extension will be another war which actually take people back another generation. So we will be losing. So they will be put down, hey, listen, here we are. The agreement is not working. You, you try your best. Now, uh, let all these resources to be, you know, let, the, let those in controlment side or faction and each, and each faction remain. Let's solve the problem who is leading this country. Let the people of South Sudan decide it. And, and, and by the way, the referendum is, is, is a one of the good examples I actually emphasize the why, because when the SPLA was actually put to, to, to peace agreement, they are the one who decided the fate of South Sudanese. But when they went to the barracks, you know, it is, and, and actually when they rebel, they rebel alone when they join the bush, the each individual get his own gun. But when they put in the barracks, so now the, the collective decision of the independent of the state of South Sudan was done by individual collective decision of the people of South Sudan with a mandate actually given to them but in, in the box. So it was a decision of South, it's not a, a few Maganese group, Neither of the, in, in the so is that thing can be also put into this to put back again. Okay, you you make peace agreement. That's fine. Let's ask the South Sudanese who they want them to, to you know to lead, irrespective of whatever the crook they mean. We can also create so many way of uh, of our international community can create some kind of 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 how this election can work. They are still very primitive. You can even bring something that can actually take most of this guy out with as long as the UN and the international community that in charge a certain ballot box in the ballot, you know, you know, people go back to election. It, it can work. This is the most positive I've heard any of you say anything <laughs> during this whole seminar. But there we go. This is an endorsement of elections and I'm going to hold on to this when uh -huh, the you. elections happen and we will see how this pans out. Um, I just want to make sure we address all of the audience's questions. So there's been a lot of interest in what all this means for REAC. So I'll ask Ferry first. There's been, we've noted in a number of previous webinars that there's been a lot of discontent with REAC's appointments, especially as appointment to commissionerships, where in places like Panijar, there's been the feeling that he's been appointing family members or close associates, and he hasn't really been responsive to people. There's been discontent that he's only in this for his own place in the power sharing agreement and he's not addressing himself to this broader thinking about what a sustainable peace would be that Ball has been talking about today. So do you think this, there are two sort of positions in the questions. One suggests that the split has actually shored up his popularity among the Nur of Unity because the split is an intra nur split by the Lonur. Another suggests that the split is expressive of a growing unpopularity of REAC. And then the question is, well, what can REAC do to restore his popularity? But then on the other hand, is that even true? Is there anyone, if we are stuck in this world of power sharing that no one, at least on this panel seems to like, is there anyone who in any way is a conceivable alternative head of the opposition? Or if it's the case that according to EGAD, we have a bilateral power sharing agreement with a single opposition, is that forever going to lock in Mashar as the alternative to Kiev? Ferry. I think the split showed the extreme weakness of, of IO. Uh, I think that it also showed that uh, that 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 Riek Machar's strategy of abandoning his military power uh, in in exchange for positions had to play out somehow this way. And on the other hand, I don't think this is radically weakening his political position. Um, but maybe Bol will not agree with me. But I don't. But I think I mean Riek Machar's appointments are criticized. Riek Machar's appointments are we see. We can you can show it by the numbers. It is 
mostly to close friends, family members, and, and close associates. So, you know, from ministers to, to commissioners, that's the pattern. Um, but on the other hand, first, of, first and foremost, we should not forget that React Machar is very capable of learning. He's a very smart man. He, he, he changed several times in his life, and maybe there's a learning curve for him to work in this environment. Maybe this will be an opportunity for him to remove some of the some of those commissioners that are completely unacceptable for the communities, like the one in Panijar. Um, and on the other hand, some of his appointments that, that he made, for example, I'm thinking about right now the, the commissioner in Akobo, that we were very skeptical about, the community was very skeptical, somehow seems to be working out for the moment and you know, gaining some popularity in calming down situations after the split in, in, uh, in, in their territories. So maybe there is a possibility for these people to show their political talent and, and, and show themselves, approve themselves that they have not just selected because they are close to the Machar, but they have their own political will. But maybe Bol will say that all I said about the Machar's position is, is, is wrong. Yeah, is it the question that, uh, if, uh, uh, sometime I, uh, so is it the, the question is about Riek appointment is positive or what is it? No, the question is, how has the split affected Riek? Can you imagine Riek losing control of the opposition? Well, you can say actually in a, in a both way. Yes, what you said in the term of the XPLMIO is, you know, uh, if you take all the split up to the last one, the, all the split, all those who are split actually they lost because the newer and all the SPLM members, they have a cost that they, they see in that is not yet addressed. And Wube joins Alpha on the other side, they look at him as a traitor, okay? So, Riyak have been commanding this, have been using this as a, as a, as a you know, and, and he knows that people are committed to, to this uh, 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 war and also any solution that can bring a fairness of what happened in 2013, okay? So the other one, uh, Riek uh, lost uh, a, a very uh, huge number of intellectual in uh, who's supposed to supporting him. And this loss is the actual uh, impact in the grassroots in the Great Upper Nile because uh, he had been seen for a long time losing and also you know, forgiven try to you know uh, to reconcile with the enemy with the with expenses of his supporters you know that that is that is a big thing uh now uh Riyak, uh most of these guys actually they emphasize uh family members who have been appointed but uh it seemed to be affect not affecting react this kind of uh they always come and say it and then disappeared, people continue, uh, uh, but it's actually affected him too much in the term of support of the, uh, of, the, of, 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 the, of the organization members, and particularly the members. The, uh, uh, but uh, the newer, as in, newer in general in, in Juba, the uh, seeing react uh, is not popular among them. But he moved forward, move, the, the, the stage of Nuer, I think, to him is a stage one. The stage two is actually how to become nationalists and then mobilizing the peace agreement that people are there. He's been accused of using peace agreement or buying the elections, you know, buying vote for election to other communities in which uh, some members inside Yoba who are, would you not go to the to the bush or to, to fought with I together was actually recruited. And if you actually see the, the last, Con, the last election, I mean, the last convention in Juba, you will be surprised. You know, these are the people who, and they were dancing, you know, all, and the majority turned up and it was a big upset of the government, you know, and, in his own territory. So it really came at this disorganizing and this destabilizing uh, the political orientation of the government in Juba. So so there's, that's why they keep him quiet, not to, to be given opportunity. Otherwise, he will actually, you know, uh, move from the newer, it's, it's, you know, phase one to come another to Equatoria and other, even the Dinka, actually, they have a lot of Dinka supporters. You know, people are surprised. So for him, losing the newer 
he's actually he's losing the intellectual. He believed that if he get a lot of popularity in the other side of the region, the new will say, hey, the guy is actually moving forward. So let's give let's give a hand, let's support him. But the big problem of him, if people go back to war, if people go back to war, he will not make it because nobody will, no soldier will, they will have less supporters that for him to go back to war. But the idea of Kataka government, I mean, the election, he may actually complaining. He have a, he have an he have an ability to talk as as he actually you know uh, Marco said, you know as an intellectual, he can address, you know he can command audience that he, you know, but he's not doing it now, uh, and 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 the government is actually uh, make him to be more like a prisoner, and he's not talking anyway, so he's he actually do it on this. The last one I can say, uh, where you, why government fail to to, uh, to to make Taban more successful when it was in South Africa. That was an opportunity for the government of South Sudan to make sure that he fully controlled in, in South Africa, supported, even the government tried to support him in prison, stay there, it's good for you, let us run the country. They never they never do it. That's why the Riyadh was brought back to, you know, to the region. And I think also it is another way you can say it's like Afghanistan, you know, having a 20, 20 years in control, but at the end, the, you know, the Taliban come back and they control the country. So we were brought back to bring the SPLM IO who continue fighting in the bush because Taliban was not able to convince them. So, but Riek now is, is now in Juba, guarded by the guy, the same guy who shares them to Congo. And they are the one, you know, and he's talking that you bought the guy. And he's actually the one sitting with them. And he say, hey, you bought my guy. They're rebelling against me. And I know you are, you are the one doing it. So and he's not fearing that of saying this. So he, sell, he actually sent the messages on this to the IGAD and the, and the region that is the government with doing this. And the government is not able to convince the region that we, we are not the one who are doing this. So, and all the emphasis of React that he has given power to his relative or whatever, you know, so nobody will listen to it, you know, to this, but it's actually destabilizing his, his political uh, base in the newer area. And this is, is, this is a fact, it is listening. Thank you, Bol. So we've come to the end of our um, webinar. I want to thank Bol and Ferry for being such excellent um, panel members. And I thought just in closing, I very briefly read from a text written a decade ago. Ball, I don't think you know this text. It's called the Mayom Declaration. And oh, I'm oh, wow. read <laughs> it's from alive, that. isn't it? <laughs> and it says, someone, the, the authors of the Mayom Declaration are describing South Sudan a decade ago. And it's, it reads, in the States, the security is broken down due to sectional fighting gripping the South as traditional leaders are deprived of their traditional authority. County commissioners have turned the counties into fiefdoms and their misbehavior has become a source of insecurity. On the political level, the SPLM leadership continues to pursue the politics of exclusion within itself and their political program to the detriment of the people. Our nation has groomed a monster that will swallow generation after generation in terms of bad leadership and extreme level of corruption which poisons our values and tradition that rejects thefts in our midst. Well, did you write that 10 years ago or you wrote that yesterday? No, no, 10 years ago. Okay. Siphoning Thank all you. million of dollars in all this kind of thing. Thank you all for your participation in this. Thank you. And we Thank hope you. to see you next week uh, where we Thank will you. have two very special guests. Thank you very much, uh, Josh. Thank you, Bol, for making the time. I wish I was at Affix with you now. Inshallah, and next time. <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.